going to go through the entire uh, flow chart here, but uh, let me give you some brief, uh, briefly some parts of it that to say that the nicotine, which is a dominant addictive, psychoaddictive substance, it's frequent exposure, which is responsible and to the self-administration of nicotine. It leads to the alteration of neurons at the cellular and the, at the molecular level. And this results into physiologic alteration and associated behavior related to the addiction. What does it do? It is primarily happening because of the secretion of these many substances in the brain and in the rest of the body. It starts, of course, with the adrenal cortex, but I think gradually, as the dopamine gets secreted by the midbrain after taking nicotine in tobacco, there is a secretion of all these substances, noradrenergic substances, cholinergic substances, dopaminergic actions, which comes in, Mao inhibit reaction, which comes in. And all this results into physiologic alteration and associated behavior. So what does it do? It's primarily responsible for various psychotic, psychiatric chaoses. What we require primarily is to understand the phenomena of tolerance to nicotine, the sensitization which is happening of the nicotine receptors in the body, the person's dependence on nicotine, the withdrawal symptoms which happen because of nicotine and absence of nicotine and the stress-induced relapses after successful quitting. The nicotine gets absorbed largely in the body through the liver and gets excreted through the urine or through the kidneys. So if one has to bring about a change primarily, you have to reduce the nicotine. It doesn't affect primarily as well the liver and kidney. But yes, it brings about a behavioral change that is very important. The key to success to quitting, therefore, uh, to quit is to improve the signs and symptoms of withdrawal, which is doable to the simple uh, medical treatment. And But more importantly, one has to bring the behavioral change. And that is what the treatment is all about. So if I have to summarize the action of nicotine, and if you see this graphic, it says that nicotine goes into the body either after absorption through the pulmonary capillaries or through the submucosal venous plexus after in the oral cavity after chewing tobacco. It crosses the blood-brain barrier, reaches to the ventral uh, segmental area, and there is release of dopamine there, which goes to nucleus accumbens, and then it acts on the prefrontal cortex to bring about the change. And what is the change? Change is primarily the form of reward and the stimulation of other circuits related to learning, stress, and self-control. You may have observed many people say that tobacco gives me alertness, tobacco gives me pleasure, tobacco gives me relief from the stress, but it's primarily because of the dopamine which is responsible for the release in the midbrain. And it is the deprivation of the nicotine which leads to the withdrawal symptoms. And this is what uh, makes the quitting difficult for the people. So this is, in a way, the brief slide, at least this much you should remember about the nicotine addiction. There is a simplified way to assess the nicotine addiction. In a quick way, you can do it if a user is taking tobacco for over 10 times in 24 hours, or the user uses it within 30 to 16 minutes of waking up. This indicates the craving for the nicotine. Uh, the abstinence precipitates the withdrawal symptoms about which we'll talk through one of the slides. It's primarily abstinence is indicating and the withdrawal symptoms is indicating the loss of control over the use of tobacco because once there is an abstinence, it brings withdrawal symptoms and then the person uses tobacco again. And lastly, the person uses it despite suffering from tobacco-related illnesses. You may not be, you may have already seen people uh, smoking after a uh, myocardial infarction or a stroke or people taking tobacco after uh, suffering from cancer, mouth cancer, getting the uh, major surgery done, they still cannot quit tobacco because nobody has told them how to do it. So it's very important that we assess for nicotine addiction. And by the way, almost 60% of tobacco users in, the, in, in India are tobacco addicted. So that's a very big challenge for us because quitting then becomes more difficult. Uh, I must also say that in women, the uh, nicotine addiction develops early and is more difficult to quit. Women also have challenge because of the social reasons that we have, that they want their confidentiality to be maintained. And the approach to the tobacco cessation is also very limited for them in a way. So there are issues with women. Women should be more careful 
especially this is meant for the urban women who are now taking to smoking more frequently. This is one very important slide, I would say, which can help us categorize in what stage the tobacco user patient, tobacco using patient is. So let's begin with this uh, Prochaska cycle, the, the, the trans theoretical mode or theory of change is primarily decision making of an individual. It's a model of intentional change if you see that those who are in pre-contemplation, they have no desire or interest in quitting. Absolute no. Almost 80% of tobacco users in India are in this phase. They either do not want to quit at all or they are telling that we will not quit at least in coming one year. We may quit thereafter or we don't know about it. The, about those who are in 20%, they are thinking of quitting, but they don't know how. So they are gathering the information themselves. They are getting the information through the uh, communication system that we have. Mass media is still lacking in uh, communicating the awareness of benefits of quitting. I think that is where the challenge we have. But yes, the remaining people are either in contemplation where they want to quit or they have just decided that, okay, I'm going to quit through the tobacco cessation clinic or a quit line or M cessation program. And he begins preparation to quit and quits tobacco. Now, those who quit tobacco for the first six months, they remain in the action phase. They have quitted, they do not use tobacco anymore. And after six months is the maintenance phase, which may continue lifetime for a successful quitter or a person may get into relapse where he tried but couldn't control and gets back to tobacco use. And somebody who gets into tobacco use may then go back to these three, any of the three stages. He may decide that, okay, I failed, I don't want to quit, I have been suffering because of withdrawal symptoms. Or he may again think that, okay, let me quit again, let me start preparing for it. Or he quits it immediately the moment he gets the stimulus, immediately that, okay, I took it by mistake, it was just a slip, and I should continue with uh, the tobacco-free life by quitting it again. So this cycle is very important when somebody comes in your clinic you can take a call in which stage the person is and provide the counseling accordingly.